Not long ago, out of the blue, Asus dropped a brand new Chromebook on everybody by just listing it on Amazon out of nowhere, the Asus Chromebook C425. Now, you'll notice I didn't say flip C425, as in like the flip C434. This is a clamshell only but it actually looks a lot like it's C434 Brother. And if you've not watched our review on that, I would say go and watch that. We'll link it in the description below because that review is going to inform a lot about this particular device, mostly on whether or not you should buy it. And I would assume if you're watching this video, that's what you're thinking about. You're trying to decide, can I save a little bit of money and get a device that's pretty close to the 434? Well, yes and no. You can get a device that's pretty close to it but make some serious trade-offs and you need to decide whether or not those trade-offs are worth the savings you're gonna see at Amazon or any other retailer. So let's dive in and find out. Today's video is brought to you by Bridge, and if you're not familiar with them, we think you should be. Their stuff is awesome, well-crafted, and they make keyboards for just about any device you would wanna slap a keyboard on, from an iPad to the Microsoft Surface line of devices to the Pixel Slate. And matter of fact, they have a Chrome OS keyboard that works on any Chrome OS device. If you'd like to learn more about their premium products and how they're backlit and made of aluminum and just work with the things that you already have to extend their functionality, Go to the link in the description and you can find out more about Bridge today. All right, let's start off with the build quality. Overall, this is a good feeling, nice feeling Chromebook, but again, it's gonna be compared to the C434 a lot. And that is a fantastic feeling Chromebook that's made out of all aluminum. And this one starts with aluminum, the lid's aluminum, and that's very nice and it looks nice and it's resistant to fingerprints. But the minute you move past the lid, we're talking all plastic. Plastic surround around the screen, plastic keyboard deck, plastic bottom. And unfortunately, regardless of what your feelings are about plastic, it feels a little bit cheaper than its C434 brother. And in general, that's got to you know inform your purchasing decisions when it comes down to using the thing on a day-to-day -day basis. There's some benefits of plastic. For instance, it's 2.8 pounds versus the 3.1 pounds of the 434. So it's nice, it's nice and light, and it doesn't look bad on the table. It doesn't pick up fingerprints, but it just feels a little bit cheaper than it should, I think. Another thing you'll notice that's a little bit different here is that this is a clamshell only. So the hinge doesn't have the normal hinges you would see on a convertible. It's not meant to fold back 360 degrees. It will fold flat, however. Uh, and you know, if you're someone who likes that or gets into that, then great, it'll do that for you. Uh, for me, I just generally don't fold devices open flat on the desk and don't see a whole lot of need for that. So with that fold flat hinge, in general, I would assume the people that do use that and like that would fold it flat in order to you know draw or touch or share something across a table. Uh, but the problem is with this one, you don't get a touch screen. Uh, and that's kind of unfortunate. And I didn't realize how unfortunate it was until you know having it around and using it. I thought, well, you know, I use touch screens every once in a while. Maybe if it's a tablet or a convertible, yeah, I'm all into touch screens. But what I found is even on just a standard clamshell, my brain now expects there to be a touch screen. There are multiple times I reached up and poked the screen and obviously nothing happens. And that's kind of a bummer. And you know, the plastic surround around the screen, I mean, I know it's anti-glare and it's matte finish and those things are nice, but it makes the screen a little different. It's a little bit inset and there's a plastic surround around it. Kind of looks a little bit cheap when compared to, you know, the C434 and other, you know, full glass uh, display panels. And then the brightness just isn't good. And I've said this about a lot of Chromebooks here lately and I hate saying it and I hate having to nag on this, but manufacturers need to fix this. This thing gets to about 170 to 180 nits brightness and it's just not great. I don't care if it's Mac finish, anti-glare, none of those things help when it's just not bright enough. And there's multiple lighting situations, including being at my desk in the afternoons where it's just not quite bright enough. And so then I'm left leaving it at 80, 90, 100% brightness all day just to be able to kind of see and navigate the screen. And all of those things honestly are just kind of unfortunate. Now that's not to say the screen is a complete and utter failure. It's not like some disaster. It's 1920 by 1080, you know, full HD, 16 by nine, good viewing angles, really nice colors. It does a lot of things right. And in, you know, normal to slightly dim rooms, you know, you're not gonna notice it and the screen's nice to use. It's just all of those other instances where you're in brighter light, where you're gonna run into some trouble with the screen, unfortunately. So up to this point, we've been a little hard on this device, but 
it's okay. It's actually gonna get a lot nicer from here on out because the rest of this device I like quite a bit actually. So let's talk about keyboard and trackpad. So first off, they've expanded the trackpad size and it feels like it's almost the same size as like the HP trackpad in the X360, which I love. It's nice and wide, it's huge. It's not made of glass, which kind of stinks and would be an odd departure for them at this point, honestly, because the C434 that's all aluminum has kind of a plasticky trackpad. Uh, so I didn't expect a glass trackpad here. We didn't get one. The Surface does feel better than the 434 though. I enjoyed using it more. It didn't seem to build up oils quite as quickly. It's still not glass and so it's still a little inferior in that way, but the size of it's really nice. The click mechanism's nice and I really just enjoyed using it. And ultimately on a device without a touchscreen, it needs to have a good trackpad experience and, and this one delivers. The keyboard as well is excellent. It's the same keyframe that's in the C434 and Though when I reviewed that device, I said, yeah, I like the keyboard a lot. Maybe it's one of my favorite keyboards. It's backlit and you know well-spaced and has tons of travel and click and all that kind of stuff. What I realized as I was reviewing with this one, I spent some time you know, writing articles and doing all the normal things I would do and ended up, for some reason, I got my Pixel Book back out and I was doing something on it. Shut the Pixel Book down and got this back out to finish the article I was writing. It was a long article, I had to do a lot of typing. There's something super comfortable about this particular keyboard. So I, I think I have to relinquish my favorite keyboard title at this point back to the 434 slash the C425. Excellent, excellent keyboard. So if that's kind of your thing and you're really into having a good keyboard, this one definitely delivers. Around the outsides of the devices, we have what I would love to just label as like standard Chromebook port selection because so many Chromebooks have this port layout, but it's great, I love it. I hope it sticks around for a long time and I hope this becomes increasingly standard as the next wave of Chromebooks comes out. USB type C on either side, USB type A so that you can still use some of those type A peripherals you have, a Kensington lock, a headphone microphone jack, micro SD card slot. So all the IO you need to kind of plug anything you need in there, it's all here. And then it's flanked with a couple speakers that though they're down firing speakers, it sounds like they're the same ones and probably the same size chamber as well that came with the C434. And those are honestly some of the best speakers we've heard in any Chromebook to this date. The only speakers I would put above them are the Pixel Slate speakers, and so far no one's really gotten close to that. But honestly, if you come a close second to that, which these do, you're getting a pretty nice audio experience and listening to music and watching some videos actually sounds really nice on this thing. Internally, this device packs a setup that I would like to see more standard on Chromebooks too. It's the Core M3 8th gen processor, so plenty of horsepower to do really anything I threw at it between extending monitors and having multiple tabs and apps and all sorts of things running. There's literally not one time I stopped to think, oh, I wish I would have upgraded this to a different processor if I could have, you know, it, it handles everything just fine, but it's paired up with eight gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. And if I could hop on a soapbox for just a second, I really think that devices in this price range, so anywhere between four and $600, eight gigs of RAM should be the, the bottom line. There should not be four gig devices out there in this price bracket. And 64 gigs of internal storage should be the bottom line as well. I would love to have seen this one with 128 gigs of storage since you're kind of lacking in a couple other areas. It'd be nice that 128 was just kind of thrown in there. It's not, and you can expand via the SD card slot. But in general, the internals here performed very, very well, I had no issues with them. And when you pair all that with a 1080p screen, the Chromebook doesn't have to work quite as hard and I was able to get plenty of battery life as well easily in that eight to 10 hour range. I don't know where they rate this. I think they might rate it a little bit higher than that. And I'm sure if you turn the screen brightness down, which with a dim screen is kind of hard to do for me, uh, you, you could probably get better than that. But once you're hitting that eight to 10 barrier, I think you know this is the, the norm that we should expect from Chromebooks. It's gonna get you through a day, no problem. You're not gonna have to go hunting for a charger and finding electric outlets wherever you're working. It does really great. So performance wise, internal wise, I had no issue whatsoever with this Chromebook. So at the end, we've got a lot of good stuff and we got some downsides here. Who's this for? Should you buy it? It depends on a couple things. Mainly, just like it seems to always come down to, it's gonna be price. This device is MSRP 499. At that price, do not buy it. Matter of fact, when I bought it at 499, I was kind of bummed because it went on sale right after that. But 
more troubling, honestly, was I bought this at $500 to review it. I bought it and immediately the 8 gig C434 that still has a touch screen, has a brighter screen, is all aluminum, and has the convertible form factor, went on sale for $560. So for 60 more dollars, I could have had all of those things and it has none of the downsides of this device. So if it's that kind of a price difference, no way would I say that you need to purchase this device. However, this one dropped to $399, I don't know, six, seven days after it came out and it's stuck there ever since it came out. So at $400, where the C434, the eight gig version, we gotta compare apples to apples here, has gone back up to 600, 600 plus, uh, pretty much anywhere you can get it. That's almost $200 difference. At that point, yeah, if you can deal with the drawbacks and you know them going in, you know exactly what you're getting here, you know you're gonna lose touch functionality, you know you're gonna get a slightly dimmer screen, well, a little bit more than slight, but a dimmer screen, and you're gonna get mostly plastic in the build quality, if you know that stuff going in and you're like, hey, that stuff doesn't bother me too bad, it's still an enjoyable Chromebook to use. And I would say, once you've saved 200 bucks, it's gonna be very enjoyable for you to use. But just know that going in. When you go to buy this, make sure you do your homework and you look online and you check prices of the 434 because if you compare them and they're somewhere around 100 bucks difference for the same amount of RAM in both of them, go with the 434, that's what you need to do. But if not, if you're gonna save a couple hundred bucks and you can be okay with some of the trade-offs here, I think this could be a good device for a lot of people. Again, I did enjoy using it. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up down below, hit the subscribe button as well, and please hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when we make new videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.